Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I am Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's Autonomous Database Office Hours Auto Indexing Deep Dive. We are very excited to be able to share with you how auto indexing can help developers save a lot of time by automating performance tuning for their application schemas, especially as the features changes over time and the system scales to larger data sizes. If you have any questions during the workshop, please put your question in the Q&A area. We have a number of developers who created the auto indexing feature available to answer your questions during the session. In addition, if time allows, we will answer questions live after the presentation. This webcast is being recorded and we will make it available shortly after the webcast concludes. Again, thank you for joining Autonomous Database Office Hours Auto Indexing Deep Dive. This webcast will be presented by Robert Green, Senior Director in Product Management at Oracle. At this point, I will turn it over to Robert. Sure. Hey, so thanks everyone for joining me today. Uh, let me put my um, screen, I'm gonna share my desktop because I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between a PowerPoint presentation and a live demo uh, that highlights what we're able to achieve. So we're here to talk about autonomous database, as you know. Um, this is the second in the series. We're kicking off a monthly cadence where we're gonna cover different features in deep dive. Autonomous databases, pretty cool. It's a sort of a new era in database where um, we have an expert system machine learning overlay basically that's driving the life cycle of the database and automating everything for you. And it lets you get those mission critical databases you expect from Oracle, but really, really simply and automates that entire life cycle, right? So that's what it is. And uh, today um, we are gonna cover auto indexing, um, other topics in, in future months. And we're gonna jump back and forth between slides and demo in order to uh, you know, both give you some hands-on and, and see how to you know, deal with auto indexing, but at the same time, talk about it uh, and, and give you, uh, you know, an end-to-end -end understanding beyond just um, what we're doing in the demo, okay? So that setup process, uh, let's describe this before we get to doing it. Uh, it, it consists of three kind of pieces. Um, you know, there's the autonomous database service itself, and there's a database, obviously, that we're going to use. I have pre-created that database, uh, so you don't, you know, we don't have to waste five minutes trying to create a database. And I have populated it with schema and data from the second component, which is SwingBench. So SwingBench is going to be used to drive a workload onto that database. And, and what we'll do is we'll also open up a set of data tools that are available inside the autonomous database. Uh, and those tools will you will use to en actually enable and monitor the auto indexing. Okay, so we're gonna use these three components. Uh, and so like I said, that database is initialized, but when I initialized it with SwingBench, I did it in such a way that um, we do not populate the indexes. Okay, so we have, we have all of the tables and, um, and data loaded into those tables, but we don't have indexes created, right? That's the whole point of auto indexing. So you don't have to um, come up with all the indexes. Now, um, enabling auto indexing with autonomous is super simple. It's literally one step, okay? So this could be the world's shortest webcast, but you know we are gonna dive down into more details so you can you kind of look under the hood. But in general, um, if you were to, you know, select from this DBA auto index configuration view, you would see your current settings for auto indexing and by default it's off. Okay. And if you, uh, use this PL SQL package, DBMS auto index, use the configure, um, procedure to change the auto index mode to implement, boom, that's it. Your auto indexing is on and it's running. Okay, so we're gonna, because it takes time for auto indexing to, to figure everything out and make decisions and do what it needs to do, it takes a while. So we're gonna start it up and then we're gonna go and talk a little bit more detail about this auto indexing and then we'll keep coming back and forth to the demo. Okay, so first part, let's get it all kicked off. 
All right. So um, what I, I'm VNCing into Oracle Cloud, basically, um, I have a, an SSH tunnel that's set up. And so I am uh, basically VNCing into a compute instance where I've got the Swingbench app. So um, let me get into that. And go to the autonomous database. Now there's a database that I pre-created called Demo 11. That's what we're gonna use for this um, webcast. So if we go to uh, autonomous transaction processing and we can find that database. And by the way, um, it's really easy to create the compute that you can run an application on because uh, there are some predefined images that have, you know, all the Oracle client drivers and all that stuff packaged onto it. And so if you create your compute with one of those images, it's really easy to get started building an application. So if we go into this database, normally you click the connections and you can download your wallet or you can copy a TNS descriptor, you know, string to, to use one of the services to connect. I'm not going to go into all that detail. It's all set up in the Swingbench app. So we don't have to worry about this. Instead, what I'm going to do is go to the tools section. And here we've got database actions, which takes us to a bunch of uh, data tools, basically. It makes it easier to use the service. And so um, we have to be inside the, the, the um, private uh, cloud network in order to uh, access the database. And so we take that URL and pop it into a browser that's inside that compute and go to these data tools. Now, I have a, a, a cheat sheet or two, uh, so you guys don't have to watch me type in order to set up the uh, SQL that we're gonna use in this tool. Give the password of the database admin when we created the database. And it brings me into a SQL worksheet view. And I'm not gonna go over all the tools, there's just no time, but uh, I'm gonna just stick straight to uh, what we need to do in order to examine the auto indexes. Okay, so like I said, if you, if you look at this DB auto index config, okay, it will uh, show you your current configuration for auto indexing, okay? And so here we can see that the current state is off, right? So by default, it's off in autonomous database. And to turn it on, all we need to do is execute uh, this PL SQL to configure the auto index mode to implement. So if we run that, then boom, now this database is ready to go. So now if you were a developer, working through some ORM or whatever, building your, your, you know, your objects, those getting trans translated into tables in the database, you can just start running workloads and indexing to performance tune will automatically be created for you. Okay, that's it, that's simple. Um, so now let's go and, uh, well, before we do that, let's look real quick. So I wanna show you that I have in fact loaded the tables. Okay, so there's the tables, right? This, this is the uh, swing bench um, order entry tables. But if I look at the indexes, okay, I'm, I'm here I'm querying all the DBA indexes where they're auto, right? So um, the auto, auto is a new column basically in DBA indexes, which says which ones are automatically created. Now actually there's, there's no indexes, but here you can see there's clearly no, no um, auto indexing that's been done. Okay, so this is a clean database. So if we go over to uh, go over to this um, screen where we can launch Swingbench. So here you can see, you know, demo eleven is where I pre-created all of this schema, right? It's the one we're, we're logged into. And so now I just want to start up the Swingbench app and drive a load. Right? We need to have a load so that that way the whole auto indexing process has. Uh, uh, DDL flowing through it, which uh, it can use to um, make decisions about how it could optimize and performance to. 
So I'm going to start this and it's, it's targeting 10 users. Swing bench is a little funny. Sometimes it doesn't start all your users, but you know, we'll see how many users we get and we'll be driving the workload. So in this case, it looks like four of them were not able to connect. So we ought to get six. Let's let it, okay, there, there, there they are. So we have basically six users who are hammering um, order entry against this database. And uh, what we've done is for the workload, I have tweaked these just a little bit so that we're doing a little bit more query. You know, the data warehouse query, the sales rep query, browsing the orders, you know, browsing the products. I just up those values a little bit so that way, you know, we can drive more stuff that normally would be used to optimize. Um, that way we get more interesting results. But what's going to happen here is this is an untuned database. So this workload is going to is going to drive up to a certain level and then that's it right it's it's performance is going to cap somewhere and you're going to get a certain number of uh, transactions per minute that are flowing through the system and then um, when the auto indexing kicks in later in theory right you're gonna you're gonna create optimizations through the indexing strategy that the auto indexing determines and when it sticks those indexes in place you're going to get faster results, you're going to improve the throughput of the system, and ultimately your transactions per minute should go up, right? That's the whole idea. But you, as a developer, don't have to worry about anything. You just write your objects, you know, write your, your basic business set of relationships, and, and uh, you know, write your code, okay? So here we can see that we're capping, you know, we're somewhere around uh, 2,500 transactions per minute, and, uh, you know, the response time is you know somewhere in, in that sort of 400 range and you know we're doing about 140 or so DML operations um, per second so you know it's 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 cruising along pretty good so now that it's going we'll go back to the uh, to the to what to the cloud console go to this these data tools again and and just sort of double check right that you know here that we've got a workload running and if we look at the auto indexes just to make sure there's in fact still no items to display okay no indexing so the whole process that develops these auto indexes um goes in a cycle that lasts about 15 minutes that's the way it's configured so really it's kind of iterations of 15 minutes that lead to a change and outcome in this whole auto indexing process. So um, we started this a couple minutes ago. We're gonna go now and I'm gonna really kind of talk through what auto indexing is all about. And then we'll come and we'll check back in here and see what the outcome is. And then you know we'll, we'll drill into reports and things like that that give you more insight into what's going on. So uh, I'm going to head back over to the PowerPoint. And uh, let's start here. OK, so the first thing is to give you an, an idea that uh, the reason why we need something like this is that the traditional way of thinking was such that you would do a really good job in development and you would understand the problem space and you'd really develop a thorough schema and at that point, you would understand all your access paths and you would develop the you know, uh, indexing strategies. And so when you got to the deployment time, your, the problem space would actually minimize. There, you know, there'd be a, 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 a couple of things you would change here and there, maybe some iteration of the app. And, and then eventually you'd really be deployed in production. And so then you would rarely have to come back and do something to resolve problems, right? Performance related problems. But in practice over the last years, especially as the development has moved to this much more agile and iterative approach, um, what's happening is uh, during development, you're really not baking the schema because you know, you're just getting your minimum viable product out. Uh, when you go to deploy that, you learn a lot. You learn a lot from your customers, you change a lot of things. And so uh, you have a lot of work to do post your first sort of deployment. And then as it turns out, um, there are a lot of issues that 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 happen um, later on after you've gone to production because 
you know, the app becomes popular, more people start using it, the data growth starts to explode. And so, you know, places where you didn't have any performance problems at all, all of a sudden start to, you know, behave poorly. And, and so the reality is actually very much inverted these days. And, and people tend to be very, very reactive um, instead of very proactive in the beginning. And so you really need something that will continuously look at your system as it changes over time and constantly performance tune in order to deal with the reality of, um, of what's happening today. Okay. So that's what auto indexing is really all about. Um, what we do is we use um, S- SQL performance management um, and, we, and we do it in an automated way that, you know, continually optimizes your system. And so, you know, we, we develop a set of baselines and, and, we, uh, and we develop a set of um, uh, automatic, you know, SQL tuning sets. We store them in a repository and, and, and that becomes sort of, a, you know, what we, what we look at it is, you know, uh, how well you're doing today. And then we're constantly capturing statistics through what, what is a high frequency auto stats process. So as the, the DML is flowing through your system, uh, we are updating the stats on the fly. And so you have a regular and continuous update of the stats um, rather than just the you know, infrequent periodic auto stats that, um, um, you know, that that would be current in, you know, for a time, but then would start to lag behind. Instead, it's constantly up to date. And then we periodically snap um, a full set of stats as well and continue that process. And then the expert system uses all those baselines and it uses the high frequency stats in order to um, optimize and, and decide which, which indexes it should create. Okay, so there's this whole life cycle. And ultimately what happens is this expert system is doing the same thing that a trained DBA would. Uh, they're capturing these baseline activities. They're taking a look at it and seeing, hey, where could I you know, possibly identify places where indexes could be added and my system could become more efficient. And, and then it's verifying that these indexes that it finds would actually improve the system. And it's doing it in a smart way. It's doing it where it's like, okay, well, would it improve, you know, all, all of my system or would it improve only a portion of my system? And so if it's, you know, part of your system is degrading or a substantial portion is degrading and a substantial and a, a relatively small portion of your system is, um, is getting improved, well, then it's just, that's not a very good candidate for an index, right? I mean, if there's only a couple outliers that, um, that don't get improved by adding this index, it actually is smart enough to mark those. And so everything else uses the new indexes, but those specific SQLs that come through will use their old plans. Okay, so it's, it's pretty smart. So it decides, you know, like where will the optimizer really use these indexes? And when it, um, you know, when, it's, when it has a good candidate, it will actually then create that index. And so they go from a, uh, an invisible state, sort of created but invisible, um, to, uh, hey, the optimizer would actually use this. Let's make it visible. And, uh, and then let's just monitor that in a continuous loop um, to see if there's, you know, anything new comes up over time. Okay, so it just does this continuously. And auto-indexing, the scope of auto-indexing is that it's primarily targeted at, you know, really secondary indexes. So, you know, um, a lot of the uh, tooling that's out there these days that helps you develop code and then you know create schemas for your database you know they they do they can deal with all the primary key and the foreign key stuff but it's the secondary indexes that um that they struggle with and so uh so yeah so you know auto indexing is looking at secondary indexes uh also it's as i as i mentioned it's continuous it's constantly looking at the workload so that it can minimize you know people interaction it should just detect that you know, you've got data growth and you've got other pa- access paths, new things that have been added, new queries. And so it just does what it needs to do to make that as fast as possible. And that applies both to tuned as well as untuned systems. So some systems that are out there right now uh, might have existing secondary indexes and they're working great, right? And so you can, you can leave those in place or it might over time actually decide those are outdated and it could, it could get rid of those. And there's ways that you can control this. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it'll even, it'll even you know, drop 
you know, uh, existing indexes um, that are no longer bringing benefit to the system and clean things up along the way. And so, uh, you know, and, and then we, we talked about the untuned case, which is typically related to development and, you know, using these ORM tools and things like that. It just, you, it doesn't create secondary indexes for you. So this will do it automatically in these completely untuned systems. So we're a few minutes in now. I'm gonna go and check. You can't really say for certain that uh, anything interesting has been found, but we can go um, back to our workload that's running and just kind of, let's go check the workload. Um, so it's, it's actually doing pretty good. It's pushing along at uh, 2,500 roughly transactions per minute. Okay, so that's sort of steady state. And now let's go look uh, at the indexing and see if anything has, has changed. Uh, sorry, go here. And so we'll run this again and see if any auto indexes were created. Okay, so not yet, but again, this system has to work, has to figure things out. So let's look, there's another view, uh, DBA um, uh, uh, auto index re report activity. And so if we look at this, this report activity, it'll tell us um, whether or not, you know, anything interesting has been happening. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll actually pull one of these as the system gets uh, stabilized and, and find some indexes to improve things. And we'll take a look at the report. But in general, um, if we pop this thing up, we can see, yeah, that nothing interesting has happened. Right, so actually, no executions have happened yet for the auto indexing. So we'll we'll go back now. Um, we'll let it work some more, and then we'll come back in again. And when there's some something more interesting, we'll dive down into it and we'll look at it. Okay. So I'm going to move back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So now. Uh, a little bit more detail. So uh, what we're looking at here again is the output of that, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the configure, the, the auto, what is it? Auto in uh, DBMS auto index config. And we can see that um, there's a bunch of things you can control by executing the configure procedure on this DBMS auto index package, okay? And, uh, and so, you know, by default, auto index compression is on. So this is an advanced uh, compression, uh, low, advanced low compression automatically on. Um, you can control the index default table space. Now, um, this is only available in autonomous dedicated because only in autonomous dedicated uh, do you actually have the ability to create new table spaces, right? So um, that's specific to uh, to dedicated, uh, shared, you do not uh, have the ability to execute that. And then you have your index mode, of course, right? The index mode, uh, I can't remember if I covered it, but it's, it, it's, it's either off or implemented, which means it's, you know, it's actively running and affecting your system. Or you can put it in a report only mode. And a report only mode would let you look at what the auto indexing system would have done um, had you put it in implement mode. And then so some, sometimes in, in some systems that are a little sensitive, you might run it in the report only mode and then look at it and say, oh, hey, that, that actually is a pretty good idea. You know? And then you could go actually implement that index strategy manually. Okay, um, So that's one thing to think about. Um, and then how long you uh, retain the, the reports that, you know, that we just looked at. There was nothing there right now, but any activities that happen you can retain those. Uh, this is the number of days. So this is pretty much, you know, a little bit more than a year. Um, and uh, how long you retain the indexes themselves, both auto and manual. So um, if, no, if no query flowing through the system is seen and no index is used um, that would normally have been used by that query for over, in this case, 373 days, then it'll delete that index because that index is not being used. And uh, for some systems, you know, 373 seems like a long time, um, but it's set to that on default because sometimes um, people have these kind of like end of year processing 
believe it or not, where uh, they they actually don't execute a certain set of queries, you know, all year long. And then, but when they do it and they're in that end of your, your processing, you know, that some of these queries, you know, they can, they can run in seconds versus hours if, if they're not um, adequately tuned. So you want to leave those things in place, right? So you can control that. Uh, and then uh, you can also control the scope of the schema. And I'll, I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but you can exclude certain schema spaces if you want. Uh, and uh, and then you can also um, uh, designate the, the the space allocation. What percentage of the table space is, is being used for uh, for the auto indexes? Okay, let's go back and we'll check it again. Back to our running workload. We'll see is there, are there any changes to the workload? Workload seems to be still be chugging along at the same level, so not likely that anything has happened yet. So if we go back and we check, we see that still auto indexing hasn't done anything interesting. Well, again, we'll give it a chance and we'll come back to it. Let's go back to the presentation, go back to the slides. Okay, so when these indexes are first created, they're actually created as invisible indexes. Okay, so they, it hasn't been determined yet that these would be good indexes that wouldn't, you know, for example, regress your system. And so they're created as invisible. That's kind of the first stage. And this is the query you see here that we have been executing in that, um, uh, the database tools in the worksheet. Uh, it basically is querying from the DBA indexes where they're auto, okay, equal to yes. And then when these things first start getting created, you'll see that they're all invisible. And it's because the system hasn't decided that they're really going to be useful yet um, with, and useful without regressing things. Okay. But after a while, what will happen is some of them will be made visible, okay? And this is when they've been verified. So it's gone through that, that process where, it, you know, it isolates, uh, it, you know, one of the sessions to use these indexes when it sees the queries coming through that would take advantage of it. It checks it out, makes sure that it, in fact, improves the performance. It does that analysis to make sure then that it doesn't regress in other areas that would pick up that index. And again, it makes that decision, right? If it, everything is good, it makes it visible. If, it, you know, if most of it's bad, it leaves it as invisible. And if it's somewhere in the middle, it may decide that it's going to tag a couple of specific queries not to use that, that index, that new plan that results from that index. Use the old plan and, and only for all the stuff that, uh, that it benefited would it um, use that new index. So it would then make it visible, okay? And the thing is, is this is iterative. And this is what we'll see in this demo is that, you know, the first pass will identify a certain number of indexes that it thinks it should create and would, would benefit, the system would benefit. And it, it does that um, in such a way that uh, it's looking at the top SQL, right? It's looking at your worst offenders, if you will, okay? But once you create these indexes, those worst offenders go away, right? And a whole new set of worst offenders comes up to the top. So now it's looking at a different set, okay? And, and that's what it does sort of iteratively. So um, with each pass, and again, these are, these are like 15 minute intervals that it normally would go through and do an analysis. With each pass, it will improve things more and more and more. And, and obviously it reaches a, a point of steady state where it's kind of done as much as it can until something fairly, significant happens to the system over time. I mean, you know, if your user base, you know, starts to grow dynamically and, you know, smaller tables that really did, didn't matter if it was doing a full scan or if it was just doing an index lookup, didn't matter. Now, all of a sudden, those things are large enough that a full scan is, is slowing things down. So, you know, it, 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 it will reach a steady state. And then, you know, as your system changes, it will, it will continually come back and make sure that it's doing the best it can. Okay, so it happens in phases. Okay, so let's go back again. 
Um, I'm surprised I didn't see anything in that first sort of 15 minute interval. Uh, let's see where we're at. I don't know if we've gone long enough to have two intervals, but let's, uh, let's go look. So it's running. Ah, there they are. Okay. So look, this is what I was talking about. And, and, and look, they're all, they're invisible. Okay. So, um, so they're not actually being used yet. And that's, so if we go and we look at this uh, workload, okay, in, in the, as the workload's coming through, it's still only pushing through this, you know, 2,500 or so transactions per minute. Okay, so it still effectively looks like an untuned system because these indexes aren't actually being used or invisible. So now it's, it's gonna go through that process where it tries to figure out um, uh, which ones are good and which ones are, you know, bad, which ones aren't, aren't good. And so, uh, we can sort of tell what's going on with the system by looking at this other view. There's a view, uh, DBA auto task schedule control. Okay. And if we look at this, it'll give us an idea about um, some of the activities that are going on. And so if we look, we can actually see that the auto task is currently running. Okay. So uh, some of the other um, tasks in terms of, um, uh, SQL plan management and stats capture, those things um, are, have run, you know, and, and they're currently not running because they'll transition in and out of different states. Um, but it looks like the auto task process is in fact still running, okay? And, and again, we, we've seen that it's, it's discovered some of these indexes uh, and it's, it's made them invisible. And so now it's probably working to understand whether or not those are indexes that it should permanently create. And so if we look at if the, if, the, if the the index activity has not completed at all, it would not even show up uh, in a report yet. Okay, so let's check it out and see if the report is showing anything whatsoever. So if we go, okay, so it doesn't look like it. Yep, so, so we still have zero executions completed. So for, um, you know, for whatever reason, you know, this, uh, the, the first full iteration is taking a little bit longer, maybe because it's just a, a brand new database that never had anything run against it. So it's taking a little bit longer to go through that first cycle. Um, but you can see that it is actively working. So if we were to keep monitoring this, um, the DBA indexes for the auto indexes, we um, would eventually, we'll, we'll see that it will identify some of those as candidates to make visible. Okay. So um, while this thing is still working, we're gonna go ahead and go back and check out the PowerPoint. Okay, so we, we haven't quite seen our first pass yet. We've seen some observation. We've seen that auto-indexing is, is working and is, is thinking about doing something that's helpful to us. Um, and, but so we'll come back to this. But let's start talking a little bit more detail about what you can and can't do with um, with the auto indexing controls and some of the PLC PL SQL packages that are there. Um, so one of the things is that you can you can get the activity reports, and I, I just ran one of those, and you know nothing has come back yet. But as it works uh, on this whole process, it will. Um, log everything that it's doing in terms of index activities and creating them, any, any kind of altering that it does, drop, if it drops anything, you know, you get a, get a full report of exactly what it has done over that period of time, right, that you can control uh, the 373 days, right, is what it's, what it's set up by default. Um, and so it'll, it'll even tell you all the things it's doing in terms of SQL compilation uh, and its ex execution and validating uh, what's been happening and why it like chose to use a new index. So it'll, it'll do a cost-based analysis and it'll tell you like, you know, how much IO change, right? How many buffer gets um, have been reduced? You know, what's your latencies now look like? And it'll characterize, you know, why it should or should not um, uh, give you uh, uh, a new plan basically and, and, uh, and, and make a, an index visible. And so you can control that report over different date ranges, 
Um, you can control the kind of format that you're getting back if it's just plain text or you know you you need something like uh, an HTML and you're going to um, forward it out to somebody and you know through an email or something that's all nice and formatted. Um, and you can obviously it's almost like um, doing tracing. You can you can ask for just sort of a basic level of information or you can drill down and get you know full detail. Okay. And uh, and you can also isolate to different sections so that you you know you just want the summary or you know if you want to really get into all the um, information about what it did to verify things and the errors and all that so you can control the report um, pretty well. So let's go back and see if we are in a situation where we can actually run one of these reports with real information, and then we'll look at it. So we look at the schedule control. And we can see that it is still running. So if it's still running, it may not, in, in fact, have found anything yet. It's still, still working through the algorithms to decide um, if it should or should not make something uh, visible. So we'll run this schedule control again and just see if it's, you know, it, it could finish and we wouldn't be aware of it. So we'll just uh, see, look. So now the auto index task has succeeded, okay? So it's completed which means very likely, um, you know, it's, it's certainly done with its cycle. So there'll be a report. Now it may or may not have found anything to make visible at this point. Um, that it looks like a first pass to me. Again, it, it took longer than usual because normally it takes 15 minutes. But let's look. Ah, so we can see now it's made a bunch of indexes visible. So it's still 14 indexes. Um, but we can see a large number of them are uh, now visible, okay? In fact, the vast majority of them were made visible. So if we look at the workload, the workload is probably changing. Yeah, see, look at the difference in workload. I mean, we were, we were running right at around 2,500, and now look at this thing ramping up to, what, 17,000 transactions per minute. So it did a really good job. It took a long time. And I, normally... You know, I've seen this when we, we do this, it goes through in phases, right? It doesn't just happen in one big jump like this. You know, for whatever reason, I don't know, a brand new database, um, you know, it, it, it looked like it took twice as long. You know, it took, it took what, about a half an hour instead of two 15-minute intervals, but it's done a really good job at optimizing. Um, and, and again, it, it could do even better, right? So, Whatever it's optimized, that's gone. More, you know, more than likely is a whole different set of SQL. It's now the top SQL that it's going to be looking at. So let's go back here again. And uh, so, yeah, so now let's take a look at this um, reporting activity. Okay, so again, this is just using the DBMS auto index package. And, and uh, I'm just doing it, you know, taking all the defaults and looking at a report. And so if we look at this report, now we should have more interesting information. And we do. In fact, you can see that there's a lot of interesting information that's that's in this report now. And we can see that, again, that, that there's been a successful execution. Um, so, so that we can see this a little bit better, I'm just going to copy it all out. And I'm gonna put it into another document that'll be easier to read. And then we can examine it. And you can see what I'm talking about. So let's just copy this. Okay. And I'm gonna put it into a Word doc. Okay. So there's just a ton of information in here. Right? Okay, we're, we're not gonna go through it all, but what I wanna do is I want to um, search this. Let's uh, let's do this. Um, let's go and uh, find. Let's see. Let's find buffer gets. Oops. Buffer gets. Okay. So here, searching on buffer gets we can find some of the improvements. So here's a query that has been improved almost 2000 X. Okay, so you can see the elapsed time has changed like dramatically. Um, and the buffer gets have gone down like, you know, significantly, right? From uh, 
what, 9 million buffer gets to, um, you know, to just about 53,000, right? The optimizer cost has gone from, you know, nearly 9,000 to five, right? So it, huge improvements, right? And so we can search through this um, document, uh, you know, for all the places where there was an improvement. So here's another query, right? This one is only 24 times uh, Im improvement, right? Which, I mean, that sounds like a really great number, right? but you can see that, uh, again, you know, big change in buffer gets, big improvement in uh, optimizer cost, right? And, and you can see the latency basically elapsed time going down dramatically. So, you know, if, we, if you go through this, you know, you can you know, look at query after query after query, exactly, you know, what was, what was the target set of tables? You know, what was the, you know, what was it looking at in terms of cardinality? By the way, you know, so I was, we'll talk about this when we get to more detail, but it's smart enough to even, you know, figure out when, you know, the cardinality of a query that's coming back, um, it just doesn't look good, right? And so then it would, you know, go and create histograms for you and use those histograms in order to improve and get more accuracy and again, create better plans. So it's, it's, it's very smart about what it does. Um, and, you know, it, it can, uh, you know, get through, you can look at just all the detail with re related to exactly what was going on with, with each aspect of, you know, the query operation and what was happening in the, uh, in the joins and the sorts and all that stuff. But you can also, if there were any errors that were happening in any way, um, all that stuff gets um, gets sussed out as well. And so you can also use this to do, you know, like debugging if, if there was any kind of an issue um, or um, other tools that we have, our performance hub and all that, where you can drill down into specific SQL and, uh, and, and uh, get the details of exactly what's going on with that plan, okay? And that's kind of performance tuning in the classic sense. But, we're, you know, we're going to talk about this, you know, where it is auto, auto indexing, like, you know, really... It shines and, you know, and where, where it's limitations and, and where it's improving, right? So there's, you know, there's some areas that you'd want to watch out for. Um, but in general, you can see that it does a phenomenal job, you know, in, in uh, I mean, look at, the, look at the throughput now. We went from 2,500 to 17,500, right? So dramatic change in performance um, without doing anything except enabling that one parameter from off to implement, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. Okay, so um, let's go back and uh, talk a little bit further about um, the capabilities, and then we'll check it again a third time. So one of the things that you can do is, you know, sometimes you're building apps these days, especially a lot of frameworks, a lot of libraries and stuff that are out there these days that you are going to use, you couple with the stuff that you're writing. And in some cases, I mean, it might, might even be an entire ISV app, and you don't really want auto-indexing to be messing around with it. And so uh, what you can do is you can uh, execute a, a command against the DBMS auto index um, package in order to uh, set the index schema for a particular namespace. In this case, I'm calling it ISV. It could be any, you know, any app namespace or any schema um, and set it to false. And that basically excludes it. You, it's also possible to do it. You know, which ones do you want to include, right? If you've got, only a couple classes, a couple things that you're writing of your own and everything else is, is uh, um, uh, good, then you, know, you can go the other way around and you can say, you can explicitly declare which schemas you want to enable, right? Versus, versus disabling. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's very easy to control that. And, so, and that, that's sort of important in the world that we live in where we're using a lot of um, other, other libraries, okay? A little bit more detail as well is that auto indexes, um, they can be created for both non-partitioned as well as partitioned uh, indexes, um, you know, locally and globally partitioned indexes. And the, it uses this high frequency uh, auto stats collection that I had talked about before. And that is something which is only available on Exadata. And so uh, these uh, auto indexing capabilities are an Exadata thing. And autonomous databases are built on Exadata. And so, you know, therefore it's, it's part of autonomous database. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, auto indexing actually will create its own baseline. So even though you, you, know, you might not be creating baselines, it is creating baselines for you and storing those inside a repository. 
uh, and it, it uh, as I mentioned, is smart enough also to, uh, to create histograms. So on your behalf, if query results just are, are looking like they've got very poor cardinality match, then um, you know, it'll do the, the smart thing in order to take a second look and figure out um, exactly what's the, the way to create the best plan for you. It operates on the quality-based indexes. So uh, non-equality or function-based indexes aren't supported this time. Okay, it's, it's being, you know, those are our future, future capabilities. Um, there are workarounds in cases. And there's a lot of really good blogs out there. I would suggest you go and uh, check out some of the blogs. Just search for blogs on auto-indexing. There's a whole bunch of really good stuff. Um, but, you know, in particular, you can work around this whole function-based index um, by using virtual columns, right? So you can, you can add a column to a table, which doesn't actually physically exist, but maps that column to some uh, function. Right, and then it, it'll 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 properly get used by the auto indexing. Uh, temp tables do not get used by auto indexing, so don't create temp tables and expect you know performance improvements in indexing to happen on those temp tables. Um, it does respect hints, so you know if you um, if you want to, you can use hints in your SQL, and it will be respected by the auto indexing. You know, even to say. Then you know not to use auto indexing in a particular uh, SQL statement. Right? You can actually you know, use a hint to, to exclude the auto index. Um, and uh, and there are some trade offs. You know some of the things if you're really if you're a performance guru and you've been playing around and using things like dynamic sampling, which controls how how deeply you go in and, and analyze, um, you know what uh, what a, a good plan might might be able to be created for. Um, you know, the, the auto indexing is using a, a dynamic sampling of only two. So it doesn't really, it doesn't go super deep, right? Which has trade-offs, right? Um, so it's it, the, the choice that we made is to go with two. So if you're a tuning expert, you know, then you might be interested in this. But the whole point for you guys, for developers, is you shouldn't have to worry about this because it's going to do a really good job for you. And it's only going to get better over time, too. So even the, the performance gurus are like super deep dive. Um, who might even know, you know, what to do about dynamic sampling and and uh, and use that to understand and you know how to uh, you know improve queries even further. Eventually, they won't have to because this is just going to get stronger. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have auto indexing details. In in we we talked about the uh, uh, DBMS auto index package. You can use that to configure your settings. You can always also use it to drop um, auto indexes. Okay. Uh, a little tricky syntax, you might want to note that. Um, and then, um, you know, you can use it to get reporting activity. But there's a whole bunch of other views that, you know, are kind of interesting. If you're playing around with it, you want to learn about it. You know, one of the things that you can do, you know, we looked at the auto task schedule control to see what the running state of the auto tasks are. But um, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, things with respect to configuration, which, uh, which we'd use the, um, you know, the index execution, the, their stats, What's happening with the, with all of the uh, activity um, actions that are performed against those indexes, and you know it's almost like with each of these views, you can get an idea of what's going on in that report. So when you when you create one of those reports, it's actually going into all these views and pulling everything out, and packaging it up for you. Um, but if you want to go and look at these individually, you can. And so you know we're getting to the end of this. The whole point is that. Um, these auto indexes eliminate a bunch of complexity for you, the developer. That's what autonomous database is all about. Um, you know, just let you get up and running very, very quickly with the database. You don't need a whole lot of DBA experience, all this performance tuning and stuff like that, all the patching. It just happens for you. Um, and you've got, you know, the ability to handle all the different data types and workloads that you're dealing with today, building your microservices using JSON or or, you know, graph or, you know, uh, IoT, relational, whatever um, kinds of data, um, whatever kind of workload. And, uh, and you've got all this built-in low-code development and all that stuff too, okay? So, um, you know, this auto-indexing stuff is just one more tool in your bag that's going to make your life really easy. And you can check it out. All of you who are on the webcast today, um, you, there's actually a special promotion for you where um, you can get uh, $500 in cloud credits um, when you create um, a new account and, and those accounts um, using this link that's on this page, you'll, you'll, you'll get the, uh, the deck. 
those accounts after 30 days, they convert to the always free tier. And then just to, re, you know, to, to remind you, the always free tier, you, know, you can have a couple of, of databases you know, that are smaller, 20 gigabyte range, some compute, some storage, load balancing, you know, enough to build some apps um, to play around with this stuff. So even if you know, at the end of 30 days, you know, if you've eaten up you know, those 500 credits or not, and you convert to always free, you can still play around. So highly encourage you to come and check this stuff out. Okay. And uh, let's just one more time, go back and check, you know, it, we're still doing 17,000 transactions per minute. So more than, more than likely it's, it's, it's still uh, in the same kind of state, uh, but let's check. Um, we'll go through and we'll do another report, an activity report and see if it's had any more executions, okay? So let's look, go back up. We can see actually it has, okay, so it's had a second execution, okay? So this is again, it's, it's iterative, right? And it's supposed to be on a, a sort of 15 minute interval. So it in fact has done another execution. Uh, and if we look, we, we might even see more indexes or you could see a change in the indexes. So if we take a look at them, okay, so it looks like it's done a pretty good job in the first pass because we're, we still only have 14 rows and it looks just like it did before. Let's just double check. Yeah, so it's, 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 looking, it's looking like it did before. The majority of the indexes are visible. And so, you know, your transactional throughput is, is good, right? which is the purpose. Let's go back. Uh, and so, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's kind of, kind of wrapping things up. Uh, this is the first feature in the developer series for Autonomous Database. Uh, what we're going to do is um, in uh, April, we'll, we'll look at auto-scaling configuration and monitoring. So you can uh, see how you're, you're benefiting from auto-scaling. And again, there'll, there'll be future um, sessions on different features as well. I think then in the next session, we're actually going to do a survey to give uh, you a chance to tell us what you'd like to hear about. Um, so rather than us just... Uh, nailing exactly these, um, these features in future months will let you have some uh, say, some input into what, what it is that we're gonna talk about in the future sessions. And so uh, there's not a lot of time left, but um, yeah, I wanna thank you. You can, you can reach out to me, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, I wanna thank everyone for spending their time. Hopefully this was valuable to you. And uh, again, we'll continue to do it you know, once a month and try to bring relevant topics um, that uh, will help you use autonomous database successfully.